guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make a cat face cake. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do enjoy it, do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. So I'm going to start with some 8 inch cakes. They're just plain round Victoria sponge cakes. And I've just cut them in half so I can put a bit of a layer of buttercream in between in the middle. Now I haven't worried about going to the very edges because I know I'm going to cut the edges off on this one when we kind of shape it properly like this. So I've, I've marked out roughly where I want it to go. I tried to put a cross across the middle so I could see like the centre line. I'm not very good at getting things central so I guarantee this is not going to be central by the time it's finished. So I've cut off a little bit off the top and the bottom and what I've done is put the pieces below on my offcuts so that my cat's going to get a body. So keep all those offcuts, we can use them for filling out the rest of the body and also a little bit where I want its nose to go. Keeping the shapes pretty basic at the moment. And guys, if you find this video is a little bit too fast and you're struggling to see what I'm doing, I do have a longer version of this. So I actually did this as a Facebook Live over on my Facebook page, which is just called Zoe's Fancy Cakes. And you can watch me doing it in real time. That way you can see how long it actually did take me. I want to say I was doing it about two and a half hours maybe in total. But it's there should you want to watch it anyway. So... I've done a bit of shaping on the forehead, tried to round it off a little bit, and then I'm removing somewhere I want the eye sockets to be. Now, it's going to be a fairly cartoony cat, so it's not in the proportions at all to, like, any kind of realistic cat. I'm going to cut some off just above where the cheeks go, and just below the cheeks as well. So I want the face to kind of slope downwards so that it comes into the neck, which is my offcuts of cake that we put on there earlier. Now, if your cake is very crumbly, you can stick it in the freezer for maybe sort of half an hour just so that it's partially frozen and just make it firm up a little bit and then you're not going to lose quite as many crumbs. So I'm just narrowing the body a little bit because it's a little bit wider shouldered than what I wanted. Once you're done, you can cover the whole thing in buttercream. If you prefer to use a chocolate ganache, that's absolutely fine. You can do that too. So just get it as smooth as you can. Now, usually I would give it two coats and I'd put it in the fridge in between. But because it was actually filmed during a Facebook Live, I didn't quite have time to put it in the fridge to let it harden. Also, you can see I'm getting a smoother finish by scraping it with a flexible smoother. And what I'll do, guys, is link everything I've used below this video so you can see what materials I used, should you want to use the same things. So I've got some fondant and I'm just going to roll it over the whole thing. It's kind of like an orangey colour. It looks quite yellow on the video. It didn't look as yellow as this when I uh, did it in person. So just make sure it's plenty big enough that it covers your whole cake. I've got way more than I need here. But I'm smoothing it down gently with my hands. Now if you're going to be serving it to somebody um, or you're doing these to sell, you know, please do wear food gloves. This one's just for me. So once you've carefully smoothed it around all the shaping that you did earlier, you can cut off all the extra from around the outside edge. Still doesn't look like a cat yet, but that's fine. Keep hold of all those extra bits. We're going to need some for the ears. I'm going to mark in its nose and mouth. I'm just using my Dresden tool. So I'm keeping the sort of mouth nose area a bit quite small. You can go bigger if you want. And I'm using a balling tool to press in either side. So it makes my cat look a bit more like it's smiling. Hopefully it looks like it's smiling. And I am using like references of actual cats. So even though mine doesn't look like a real cat, I'm still looking at images that I found online of cats just because it is going to help me a little bit with like what a nose should look like. I've just got a small bit of pink fondant for the nose. I've kind of created a gap for the nose with my Dresden tool. And then I'm pushing the pink paste into that. I'll give it some little nostrils and like a little line that goes up the middle. And I think these kind of edge of the cheek bits, I want to point them out a little bit more. So because my paste, like my fondant that I've put on is still quite fresh, it's still fairly flexible, I can get away with moving it around and bending it. If you've spent a long time on it at this stage, you're going to find your fondant might start drying and cracking. Just push two eye holes in with my balling tool. Go as big or as small as you want those eyes to be. Now I'm going to have one closed eye, one open eye on mine. So I'm going to fill the first one with the same colour that we covered the cake. And then the second eye is going to get filled with white fondant. So when I say fondant, guys, I realise fondant is quite an American term. Um, so I mean sugar paste or ready to roll icing if you're in the UK. So I'm just drawing a little mark over its eye where I want its kind of eyelashes to go. I want it to look like it's winking. And then if you want, you can add a bit of texture into the fondant itself. So anywhere you want the hair to look long, draw long lines. Anywhere you want it to look short, just kind of dab it slightly. Try not to puncture through. So try not to stab it so hard that you create holes in your fondant because it, it'll dry out your cake underneath if we end up with lots of holes. 
And you're going to do this all over the face. Now, I did do a few different designs for the cat face cake. So I actually have got two different versions of this. And I hope to get these onto my YouTube channel as soon as possible for you guys to see those ones as well. So the hair's a little bit longer on that chest area and up near the top of the head. Now, you might find it takes you a long time to do all these hairs. And you might not want to put them in. So that's fine. You don't have to have them on there. Now I'm going to use some black fondant and a little circle cutter to put the pupil in its eye. Roll it out nice and thin for this bit. And I'm going to do the iris with a green pen. Now, if you want to mark out a circle with kind of a cutter, you can do. Or you could just use green fondant that you've stuck on on a disc underneath the black. But I wanted to have a go with my edible pen. Again, remember, I'll put links to all these things below the video so you guys know what I've used. I'm going to push that into the eye. So I've gone for star shape in white fondant. And I'm going to use a white edible pen as well for any smaller little kind of sparkly dots of light that I want to be in the eye. I'm rolling a thin piece of black fondant. Now it's very soft. If you want to swap to like a modeling paste or a gum paste for this, you might find it's a little bit firmer and easier for around the eyes. Done a thinner piece at the bottom, a thicker piece at the top with a point on each end. I kind of flick the outside bit outwards. It's more like eyelashes. So like I say, not a realistic cat at all, but that's fine. We want a similar size and shaped piece for the other eye, but it's going to go across that line that I put in earlier. If we want more eyelashes, just give it a little snip with some small scissors. Just make sure you have only used your scissors for cake decorating things and definitely not for anything else. <laughs> so let's cover the board. I'm just marbling together a few different colours. I think I've got purple, pink and blue. And we're going to roll it out. So I want a fairly long piece and we're going to try and wrap it around the cake or the cat. I'm going to have to cut bits off slightly to try and shape it and be able to pull it around. If it doesn't stick to your board, just put a little bit of water or edible glue on your board to help stick it in place. So keep snipping bits off or cutting bits as you're going around. And then anything that goes beyond the edge of your board, you can just trim off. And I've got quite a big cake board and that's to allow for the ears to go on there as well. So I've got some of that leftover fondant that we were using earlier. And I'm going to roll two big sort of teardrop shapes. And then I'm pressing them down in the middle with my rolling pin. So you can see the thinner in the middle, slightly thicker at either side. I'm going to cut a little slope on each side so that hopefully they attach better angle wise to the side of my cat's head. And it's up to you whether you want to place them higher or lower than what I have done. Just going to attach them with a little bit of water or edible glue if you prefer. So I've kind of folded it over a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit, not much. And then I'm going to put some more hairlines into those ears. And let's just decorate our board. So I've just got these sprinkles. These ones have got chocolate in the middle. Again, I'll put a link below to which ones I've used. I thought they looked quite nice. Just a few on the background. Now these rod shaped ones, they're not chocolate in the middle. I think it's like raw spaghetti in the middle of the rod ones. So the round ones definitely taste nicer than the rod ones. I probably wouldn't eat the rod one even though they are edible. So now we're going to colour the cat itself just a little bit. And I'm using a mix of edible powders in like browns and blacks mixed with a dipping solution. You can use like a clear alcohol or a lemon essence. It's just a little bit better than using water. It evaporates very quickly. So you don't actually get any of it left on the cake by the time it's evaporated. But it means that I can put several layers on and it dries very quick. If I use water, it just makes my fondant very sticky, very tacky, difficult to continue painting onto. So anywhere I want to go darker, I'm just painting. I've kept it very liquidy, so a lot of the dipping solution compared to powder, anywhere where I want it to run between the hairlines. And then when I want it to stay on the surface, I'm going to keep it much thicker paint, so more powder, less dipping solution. So I'm using white on the bits that I want to look a bit lighter. And I've gone thicker with the white because I don't want it to drip between the little lines that I drew in earlier for the fur. Again, I realise I'm showing you very quickly how to paint on this video, but don't forget, if you do want to see it in real time, you can watch it over on my Facebook page. So I did make this one a couple of weeks ago for a Facebook Live, but it is still available to watch on my Facebook channel, should you want to, on my Facebook page even, should you do want to watch it in real time. So I'm just darkening up any areas that would be really shaded. Or lighten any bits again, so I'm going around the edges of the eyes. And it's up to you if you want your patterning to be like a real cat or a cartoony one. I was kind of opting for between the two. 
started looking a bit like is it Oliver from from the Disney film? I can't even remember what the cat's called. I might have got it wrong. It might not be called Oliver. So one of the other cats that I did was my favourite, but we we put it to the vote on our Facebook page as to which cat people wanted to see me do, and this was the one people most wanted to see me do. I did a grumpy cat as well. The grumpy one was definitely my favourite, but like I say, I'll get that one on here, hopefully within the next few weeks. So I've got two more to show you. So still painting here, a bit of pink in the ears, and then I think it needs something around its neck. So it was undecided whether we were going to go for a bow or a collar. So I was just quickly showing people how to make a bow. So it's quite a wide piece of paste. Now this one I actually swapped and used a modeling paste rather than a fondant because it's just firmer for making things like bows. I can go thinner with it without it sort of flopping as much, without it being as soft. And I do like the bow. I like the bow a lot. But we also had the option of a collar. The bow was very big on the neck, so the collar meant we could see more of its chest. So just a strip of black, this is fondant that we've got here. Just cut it off where it meets the board. And as requested by some of our watchers in the Facebook Live, they wanted some little metal studs. So we just put like a little teardrop of black fondant in each of these indentations that I made across the collar. And then once I got all those in, because they don't look very metal stud like when they're black, we just used some edible metallic paint on there. So I started with silver. I couldn't decide between silver and gold, but we went for the silver in the end. And these ones that I'm using are water activated paints. And if you want them to look like this light reflecting, go for an even paler silver or even white, just a tiny bit on there, but don't fully cover them in that color, just little bits. So fairly diluted again, I'm gonna go into the sort of nose and muzzle area. So I did press some indentations in the face earlier. I don't know how much I showed you of that, but this is where the whiskers are gonna go. Now I'm actually using noodles. These ones, the vermicelli noodles. They're very thin, very fragile, so you just have to be careful. Sometimes I have to poke a hole in the face first with a cocktail stick where I want them to go, but they are completely edible, so you can use them on your cake. So anywhere you want them to go, it's up to you whether you want them to be really long or not. What I found was some of my longer ones were snapping, so I tried not to leave them too long. And some of them are quite wavy and wiggly shape-wise, but I think it added to the character. I, I liked it not completely straight. And of course, the colour of them is pretty much the same colour as my cat, so we're going to lighten them up with a bit of white. So it's just the white food colour, again, mixed into a paint with some of my dipping solution, which is, of course, edible. And then we're just going to paint along those whiskers. So that was the bow. I do like the bow, but I think it's very big. But that's the video guys. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to check out my other videos. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.